But I'm going to begin, guys, by I mean, these two characters, I mean, they're, they're kind of inherently quite clumsy uh, and they're at times remarkably intelligent. But at the core, there's something quite tragic about both of them. They must have been such great roles for you both to get your teeth stuck into. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> that's, that's a good description that you say because we, we had that feeling as well when we incorporated ourselves into the character or, or, or the other way around. I don't know which, one, which way it works. But we were always thinking that... Um, these characters, their, their ultimate tragedy is that, you know, they did something incredible in terms of, I mean, literary terms of incredible, like how the hell did they pull this off? Why did they do this? This is, it's ridiculous what they did. It required a lot of organization. I mean, the, the potential of these guys is incredible. And they just channeled it to something that is, I don't know, quite, it was very wrong to do. It ultimately led to, to the, um, in a way, to the destruction of their lives and their families as well. Um, so, so it is a, I don't know, us from the side of the characters, you know, we were very empath empathetic with, with the emotional journey of these characters. And, um, and yeah, we feel, I don't know, I feel sad for them, yeah. Because yeah, I mean, one of the most interesting things about this is that we don't understand their motives necessarily. We don't know why they do some of the things that they do. Um, and do you guys know? I mean, do you? Because obviously, that's part of the point of this, isn't it? That we're not really privy to what it actually, what their actual reasons for this. But did you come up with those reasons in your head to help understand the characters, or did you also like that ambiguity? <laughs> Yeah, well, we, we, we talked a lot about why, why these guys did what they did. Um, and I think at every step we took, we, we found um, maybe a reason or another explanation. Because ultimately, I don't think there is a logical, uh, a logical direction on why they did this and for what reasons. So. I think what's interesting also is that we can live with that ambiguity, and it's not—it's rare that uh, that the character that characters are like this because uh, you know more mainstream movies. I mean, characters have a definite reason, or you know, they're much more colored, and these ones have um, uh, different ways and different ambiguities and contradictions and. And so I think, I think ultimately the, these characters did what they did. Um, it was part of the moment. It was the system that kind of <laughs> brought them there. Uh, I don't know, I don't know. It's a, it's a long explanation, but I think, uh, I think it was part destiny, part a very spontaneous thing for them to do, and part of a portrait of what was happening in the 80s in terms of the future, you know, of, of what, what, where we are right now. That must be one of the most fascinating things for, for actors, is because is, is, acting is a tool to understand the world and people. You're, all, you're, you're always inhabiting different people and adopting different perspectives. Does that give you a great understanding of the real world, would you say? Oh yeah, that's one of the reasons why we want to be actors. I mean, it's just incredible that you can live many lives, you know, that we can, uh, that we can see different perspectives and, they, uh, that, and that we can also entertain other people's perspectives without it being I don't know, harmful or, or without it causing a, a problem to us. Um, you like being an actor? Sí, claro, sí. Sí, no, y aparte, la, te lo voy a decir en español. ¿vale? Yeah, then we translate it. Eh, pues la, la posibilidad también de, de reflejarse en el otro, ¿no? Que el espectador se pueda proyectar en, en lo que está pasando en el actor, pues es, es maravilloso, ¿no? Y creo que también por eso hacemos esto que hacemos tan maravilloso. <laughs> Just yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> I completely agree. Yeah. Uh, and um, what was your, what do you say was your favorite exhibition at the museums when you were a child? Because I used to love the ancient Egypt ah. stuff. Was there a thing that really captured your imaginations? Yeah, yeah. The, um, I remember for me the in the anthropological museum the the museum the Maya section of the Mayas. When I was when I was little, it, it was the one that I felt, you know, I don't know. You, you chose which culture you wanted to be, you know. 
and the and the Mayas were one that I I don't know they they were they were more um, baroque and churriguresque, you know, and had this kind of like a, a taller buildings, you know, and this kind of in the jungle. It was I think they, they were my favorite, yeah. Es difícil, ¿no? Porque puedes ver también esos murales que me enseñaste en el museo de, que están completamente coloridos, ¿te acuerdas? Ah, los, de, los de Cacaxla, ¿no? Es, es tan vasto, tan eh, espacios tan distintos y tan poderosos que los mayas tienen, pero los aztecas tienen, los mexicas tienen, uh -huh. ¿no? Los olmecas, esas grandes cabezas de baby face, ¿no? Entonces, yeah, sí, sí, sí. todo eso. Pero definitivamente, el Museo de Antropología es uno que is one of the most beautiful museums in the world. It is really incredible what, what there is there and, and, what, and how alive it is, you know, and, um, and it's free. So it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so much for your time, much appreciate it, guys. Thank, thank, you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey, hey you guys! <laughs> hey you guys! <laughs> Hey, that's what they all say. Hey, you guys! Hey, you guys!